first step to successfully starting seeds indoors is germination. And every year, this is a trending topic, especially right now. But let's try to help you get them seeds germinated. You'll notice at the Hillbilly Grow setup, we really ain't growing much right now. I got some experiments going with my soil blocks and we got all kinds of weird stuff going on here. But I'm in zone 5B, so I haven't started a lot right now. But my germination is always pretty good. You can see here, there's some germination that's not pretty good. So let's go over that. So let's get right to it and make this a pretty quick video. If your seeds aren't germinating, it's probably because your humidity is wrong. I've seen a lot of Facebook posts where people show their seed setup and they wonder why they're not germinating and they have everything uncovered so moisture can leak out. I don't care how you're starting your seeds, whether it's in jugs, cups, if you're doing it in pots, soil blocks, trays like this, seed cells, you have to cover them. When you have that wet medium to start your seeds, you got to keep that moisture in there to get those seeds sprouted. I really don't use these anymore. <laughs> That's actually cat hair inside there right now for an experiment. But if you're using these, you got to cover them up. Like when you put the seeds in there, put plastic wrap or something there to keep the moisture inside. If you're using clear jugs, when the seeds are still inside there getting ready to germinate, keep it taped shut so all this humidity stays inside here and keeps all these seeds moist. The cooking pans with the clear lid work really good. Got some plants in here starting. Check this out. You can see the surface coming up in these soil blocks. I have four of my six artichokes starting to pop up, which is pretty cool. I got some jalapenos in here for a future experiment. But that's the key here. Like you see how moist these things are? They never lose moisture. If any of your growing medium gets dry and your seeds start to germinate, they are not going to completely germinate. They're just going to die off. You have to keep the moisture in there. And it's an unpopular opinion that once your seeds sprout, you take these lids off. I don't do that. Once your seeds first start to sprout, they still need that moisture. So what you can do is you can leave the lids on like this and just pop it like twice a day to get a little bit of air in there, but still keep it nice and moist. They can deal with the humidity. So if you keep the humidity good, you have some of your seeds coming up, everything's going great. And after a long time, you notice nothing's going on with some of your other plantings. I know for a fact that these three blocks here that didn't come up are just bad seeds because this is a new seed technology not good at all. Even if you buy them from the hardware store or big box stores or anything like that, a lot of times those seeds are pretty good. Those fresh seeds, if they don't come up, it's usually your fault. And it goes back to humidity, so make sure you keep everything nice and moist and covered until germination and about two weeks or so after. And eventually, when they get strong enough, you can completely remove this and just let them do their thing. This video is supposed to be about germination. We got a little off topic talking about what to do after the seeds germinate and they're just seedlings. But I think it's really important, especially now when you guys are just starting your seeds out to know this stuff. So I had to throw it in there. Number three, not all seeds are created equal. A lot of the stuff we plant grows pretty much the same. It's got different germination rates. Some may take a little longer to sprout, but in the end, our process is pretty much similar but there's a few oddballs out there kind of like the artichoke if any of you guys are trying to grow seeds like milkweeds some different perennials they need something that's called cold stratification that's where you're going to take your seeds and the best way to do it is put them in a damp paper towel and put them in your fridge for several weeks and then plant them in a warm area even without the cold stratification some of these seeds will germinate but you're going to get a poor germination rate and you're going to think the seeds are bad but in the end, it comes down to they really needed that cold in order to sprout. Like my artichokes. I could have planted them just straight out of the seed packet, but that cold stratification really helped out because so far we have four out of six. And with this, the seed packets lie a lot, I found. Stuff like butterfly weed, if you look at it, it says, so after danger of frost. If you do that, you're probably not going to get a lot of butterfly weed. So that's something like I'd scatter in my yard and just 
let nature take its course in order to germinate outside. I really don't know why people grow stuff like that inside and start inside. It's like a natural weed that will just grow outside on its own. Number four kind of goes with the cold stratification that some seeds need. It's seed preparation. Some of your seeds with a harder shell, they could benefit from soaking them in warm water overnight. And some of them, kind of like the moonflower, the daturas I showed you last year how to grow, they could benefit if you clip the shell or hit it with a file just to open it up a little bit and then soak them so the water can get inside there and moisten it up. So not all seeds are created equal. You got to know what you're growing. And that's something you can't really rely on the seed packet for. You got to do your own research. So let's do a quick recap here so you can succeed this season. Number one is humidity. Do not lose that humidity. Do not let your substrate dry out before those seeds sprout. When they do, keep that dome on there and give them a little bit of air until them seedlings get really established. Number two, good seeds. I think a lot of people buy their seeds the same year they're planting. So most of the time, you're going to get pretty decent seeds, even from big box stores. A lot of people, when they start seeds, put like two or three seeds per cell. So that increases your germination rate. So if nothing comes up, you know there's probably some kind of problem there. Three and four, we're going to combine here with the cold stratification and all seeds are not created equal. You got to know your seeds. Don't always trust the seed packets. Do some research, figure out how your seeds grow. A lot of your perennials, you got to put them in the fridge for a few weeks to get that cold stratification or you can win or sow. That's something I'm trying this year. Soak some of them hard shelled seeds in some warm water at least 24 hours before planting. Don't be afraid to take some nail clippers or a nail file and nick the outside of that seed coat to really get some of that moisture inside there. If you guys already started your seeds and you had failed germination and you're in zone 5B like me, or even in zone 6, it's not too late to start a fresh batch of seeds because you should not have started them early anyway. Make sure you check out my video on when to start seeds indoors because starting early is not a good thing. You're going to run out of space. I am lazy and I do not like potting up. I just want to be able to grab a block like this or a seed cell and toss this right out into my garden the way it is. Once the grow season really kicks off, all these blocks might go into solo cups. So solo cups are going to be the biggest thing on this top rack here. And maybe this pot of beans, my four-year-old grow. Got some beans that are starting to come in finally inside here. Got four plants in here. For him, I guess I can make a little room off to the side to keep these there but everything else is going to take up this space and that's going to be all my indoor starts that go out to my garden like i mentioned in the past video we're using these clear rubber maids here to do a bunch of seed blocking for a lot of my brassicas and lettuce and you know stuff like that some of the early season crops which are also really great to direct sow had really good luck direct sowing stuff like that so in you're trying to utilize space like this, don't feel the need to start everything indoors. A lot of bonus tips in there. So if you don't want to watch my other videos, I just threw in some key points of those in here. But in case you want to watch them, I'm going to put some links in the description to some of my other seed starting videos. Try to help you guys have a successful season here. And by this time, if you learned about seed germination, you've probably tuned out. You're on to the next video. Some of the videos on this topic give you a lot of reasons why your seeds aren't germinating. I'm giving you the most basic ones that are probably the reasons your seeds aren't germinating. So I really hope this helps some of you guys out. If you have any questions, you might have noticed I respond to almost all the comments. So feel free to leave a comment and I'll tell you what I know, what I've done, and others can chime in too and we can all share information. When things get missed in videos, you go to the comments, you'll see a lot of conversations going on. You get a lot of good information out of there. So that's your seed germination video for the weekend. I got some permaculture stuff coming up, some pruning, doing a little bit of vermicomposting underground. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Subscribe to get all those updates. And as always, thanks for watching.